What's up, everybody? Welcome into an All 22 Daily. It's just me today. Ray's actually in Canada. So I'm going to try this solo thing. Uh, you know, like he left me out a few weeks ago. I'm going to leave him out today and we're going to try it out. I actually thought this was a great opportunity because uh, early in the preseason, I did a kind of uh, a ranking of the incoming rookies, right? Where we talked about, uh, we talked about which which prospects before they were drafted on their NFL team did I think had the most potential for the NFL? Uh, we we went through position by position. Every day I was releasing a different one. And today I want to talk about how now that we're a fourth of the way through the season, how is that kind of panning out? So starting with quarterback, I'm going to talk about CJ Stroud, who was my number one ranked prospects in the preseason. And I think he's proven most of the things that I kind of foresaw. And one of the things I'll say, right, is when you're reviewing a prospect in the preseason before they're on a team, the team they get drafted to matters a lot, right? It matters a ton to their production early on. I think that's what we're seeing in Bryce Young. We'll talk about that. But also, when you're talking about such an early stage in the season, a lot of what you're seeing should be a reflection of what you saw in you know, college. Prospects that you thought needed a lot of work will show early on in the season that they still need a lot of work prospects that you thought were further along, you will see that they were further along, right? You'll see that early impact. I think CJ Stroud is a great example of that. He's a guy that I really liked um, and I thought would succeed early on because he is a, a quick release pocket passer. Um, he reminded me a lot of what Tua has in his game, right? He can get the ball out quick. He can follow a script um, and he knows how to go through his reads quickly. He, he looks at one, he goes to two, and he gets the ball out of his hand very quickly. Um, and he's continued to do that. He's also a really good decision maker like Tua. Um, the thing I liked about Stroud is he's a bigger body Tua, right? So hopefully you don't have the same injury stuff. Um, Houston went and got him a really strong offensive line early on uh, in the offseason. They made that their priority. And I think it's paying dividends, right? CJ Stroud, he's the only one of these rookie quarterbacks that hasn't thrown an interception yet. Um, but he does have four turnover worthy plays. Uh, but he also has three big time throws, right? 1,200 yards, six touchdown passes. He looks great. He's got a 73.3 grade this far in the season. Uh, for a rookie quarterback through four games, that's exactly what you like to see. Uh, big knock on the Texans was that they didn't really do a lot to improve their receiver room, but it's showing to be a strong group at, nonetheless, right? We have uh, Tank Dell doing a lot. We'll talk about him. Um, but Nico Collins as well has really stepped up and proven to be that kind of like number one target, big bodied guy that we were all hoping he would be. Um, so Stroud, really confident in him. He was my number one guy in this offseason. I think we're seeing that early on. He is PFF's number one graded rookie quarterback. Number two is Anthony Richardson with a 53.9 currently in the season. Two big time throws, three turnover worthy plays. Um, but he's actually doing some things better than I expected him to. I had him as my number three behind Stroud and Bryce Young. Richardson is doing a lot better job finding his targets and uh, giving his receivers an opportunity to catch the ball. Um, his adjusted completion percentage right now is 69.2, which is actually higher than it was in college or you know, right about there. So I um, like to see that the game hasn't gotten too quick for him. Uh, and, and I see that progression. I see what he's able to do. The thing that we're worried about with Richardson is he hasn't really done a great job with his legs. He has a 47.8 rushing grade, and I think we're seeing that sometimes he's not making the best decisions running the ball. He has two concussions already, right, um, or had to leave the game early with two head injuries, uh, probably, hopefully, just one concussion. Um, but Richardson really needs to do a better job protecting his body, making smart decisions so that he can prolong his NFL career, but also stay on the field enough to learn enough to be successful at the quarterback position. Now, Bryce Young was my second graded quarterback. He is uh, currently sitting at third with a 46.9 PFF grade. Um, Young was a guy that I thought would have more success based on his college film, but I was so weary about that situation he was going to in Carolina. Uh, I, I was one of the people that did not like their offensive line. I know a lot of people thought that the investments they had made should start paying off. Right, We saw them go and draft Akeem Aquanu last year, but Akeem Aquanu himself was a raw prospect that needed a lot of uh, improvements to be successful continuously in the NFL. We're seeing that right now, and Young is consistently under pressure. He currently only has one big-time throw, six turnover-worthy plays, um, but he does have a really good adjusted completion percentage, so he's doing everything he can do to get the ball out of his hand into his receiver's arms but the receivers are not great either, right? The situation, not great. Adam Thielen is his number one receiver currently. 
Uh, Mingo is still learning the NFL game. He looks raw. And they don't have draft picks, right? They don't have draft picks this year, a first round draft pick this year to improve that situation. So I don't really know how they improve things for Young. Young is that type of player that I think can do a lot on his own. He's trying to. I think that's what the turnover-worthy plays represent, right, is a guy that's trying to create on his own and struggling currently. But as he gets more time in the NFL, I, I hope that's that improves. Um, he does have to try to throw the ball away better. Uh, he's currently taking a lot of sacks. He's one of the um, highest sacked quarterbacks in the NFL. But then looking at the rookie quarterbacks as a whole, one thing that I think is very promising, C.J. Stroud, 2.66 seconds uh anthony richardson let me look his is also very quick i didn't write it down but it's, it's under two it's under three seconds as well and then bryce young 2.95 uh seconds as well so all three of those quarterbacks time to throw is currently under three seconds one of the biggest knocks we have against a guy like justin fields is he's holding on to the ball way too long right and it's caused problems uh throughout his career so far into year three uh, he, he's not trusting his receivers. He's not getting the ball out. He's not trusting the system either. Stroud, Richardson, and Young are all doing a really great job of that. So I think that has really done uh, a lot to help them be successful in their early kind of uh, NFL careers. So let's take a step away from quarterbacks. Now let's go look at some of those receivers now. So my rankings uh, before, again, the teams, they, we knew a team these guys were playing for was Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, JSN, and Quentin Johnston. And so far, you know, with that order, I, I don't hate the way I ranked it, you know, early on. But a guy like Puka Nakua, right, comes out of nowhere, uh, fifth round draft pick for the Rams, 89.5 receiver grade, which is one of the best of all receivers, not just rookies. He's 501 yards, which I believe is leading the league. He only has one touchdown, but he has 39 receptions. Again, I think that also is leading the league. So Puka Nakua comes out of nowhere. Uh, Cooper Cup gets hurt, and he kind of steps into that role and has been as consistent as you can ask for any rookie player, but you know any player in general to step into a guy like Cooper Cup's um, uh, shoes. Puka Nakua, though, my worry about him as a long-term investment is just what happens when Cooper Cup comes back, right? Cooper Cup is projected to come back in the next couple of weeks. Does Puka Nakua still get the volume that you want, right? That maybe if you're a traditional fantasy guy, you worry about in all 22, I still worry because he's not going to have as many opportunities to flash, right? If you're not getting the ball the ball uh, a lot, yes, you can still grade highly, but there's going to be a cap as to how high you can grade. Um, he's going to have to do a lot with the receptions he's given. He does have some decent yak ability. He's shown that. Um, but just keep an eye out as to you know what happens with that situation when Cup comes back. I'm not saying trade him because I think you know Cooper Cup being almost 30 years old, or if not 30, there's not that much left in his career. Puka Nakua could be that next guy in that Sean McVay system. And Sean McVay, kind of a receiver genius. So definitely hold on to your shares there. Two surprises for me are Marvin Mims and Rashi Rice, both second round picks. Similar kind of style football, bigger bodied receiver, deep threats. Marvin Mims just doing a great job, 84.2 on only 11 targets. But his A dot is 22.8. So his receptions are way downfield. Um, he's proven to be that deep threat. And I think they just need to figure out how they get him more involved in that offense if they've seen that he can be so successful. Rashi Rice, second round pick as well. Like I said, 79 PFF grade, 140 yards on 18 targets and a touchdown. Again, I think both teams, the Broncos and the Chiefs, need to figure out how to get these guys more involved in those offenses. But if you did take a shot on one of those, you, those guys, you have to be very happy with the return you've gotten so far, uh, just knowing that they can be you know, potential big threat players for your team. Now you want to see them reach that snap count every single week, which so far has been very uh, kind of suspect. Zay Flowers uh, was my number two receiver. He's at four on the list, 75.5 grade, 244 yards, still hasn't gotten into the end zone as a receiver, but he's done some things rushing as well, and he's, he's proven to be successful all over the field. Um, but Zay Flowers really flashing a lot with his route running ability. He's one of those guys that breaks people down. You know, he reminds me a lot of what the Cardinals were trying to do year after year when they were drafting these smaller receivers, but none of them were as dynamic as Zay Flowers is. So if you made that investment, you have to be very happy in that return. And then Tank Dell, the next guy on this list, uh, he was a third round pick by the Texans, 74.7 PFF grade. He has 24 targets for 267 yards and two touchdowns. I think a lot of C.J. Stroud's success is, is due to a guy like Tank Dell 
who can get open consistently, right? I talked about CJ Stroud being kind of that system guy, likes to go through his reads quickly and get the ball out of his hands quickly. You need a guy that can separate in order to do that. Tank Dell is obviously that guy, right? Only like 165 pounds or something like that. But he's a guy that can get open. He's proven he's a good route runner. Um, so yes, you, you're psyched if you got Tank Dell. I had him as five on my receiver list, but he didn't make my my uh, you know top guys of the last three four years. So he he was outside of that, but he was the guy right after Johnston that I really liked. Um, and I think there was an argument that he should have been higher than Johnston. Um, if you watch the film, I think Johnston's body. Uh, he only has a 60.3 grade so far. Um, he only has 44 receiving yards. There's still so much we want to see from him. Uh, but so far, it hasn't been great. Mike Williams is hurt. Johnston might get more of an opportunity. So keep an eye on that. JSN, 52.9 grade so far, 57 yards. Not great. Um, I wasn't as high on, on JSN as other people were. And the reason being is because there's so many other weapons there, right? Metca or Excuse me. That's not why I didn't like him. The reason I didn't like him is I didn't see the speed. I didn't see as much separation as I wanted to see or the big play potential I want to see, right? Um, he might be a high reception guy at some point in his career. I don't think he's there yet now that he went to a place like Seattle where they have Tyler Lockett, they have DK Metcalf, they have a really good run game. So the volume just isn't there for JSN right now so that he can prove that he can be this dynamic guy. So still TBD on him. And then the last guy at the receiver position I want to touch on is Michael Wilson. So third round pick, 237 yards, two touchdowns, 70.9 grade. He's been a really constant there for the Cardinals. Like I said, they've been trying to find these guys for years at the receiver position. First year without Kingsbury, all of a sudden you have a guy like Michael Wilson step up and become this really strong player for them. Uh, another big bodied guy. Uh, huge reason Joshua Dobbs was successful this past week. Michael Wilson had a huge game. So keep an eye on him. Uh, don't know if he's a must start yet, but he's a guy to keep an eye on. Then just really quickly at running back, uh, two guys, Bijan Robinson and Devin A. Chain, uh, two guys that really excited about in the preseason. A. Chain, I wasn't as high on until he got picked by the Dolphins, right? So he wasn't in my rankings because it was before I knew he was on the Dolphins, but he goes to the Dolphins and it's just the perfect situation where they love speed, right? He has a 93.5 grade this season, which is one of the tops in the NFL, if not the top. He's 300, over 300 yards. He has a bunch of touchdowns, right? Both rushing and receiving. And he's proving to be a really valuable threat for that offense. So keep an eye on him. But the guy that I still think is the number one is Bijan Robinson, 75.6 grade. We see highlights every week of him ju juking linebackers out of their shoes. He is doing everything in his power to be successful. They haven't given him a ton of opportunity. His workload is still pretty low. But to be completely honest, that's what I'd like to see, right? Like, I don't want them just grinding this first round pick into the ground because then his career is going to be three, four years before we start to see these injuries pile up. I think they're really doing a great job with workload management. So like to see that for Bijan. At tight end, I had my ranking, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, and Luke Musgrave, one, two, three. But Sam Laporta has come in and definitely been the best guy so far early on in his career. Another Iowa product, right? We see those tight ends from Iowa being successful. 78.8 PFF grade, 242 yards. But his run blocking and pass blocking has been great too. 73.4 pass blocking grade is really the number that uh, stood out to me. Um, but we've seen him at the goal line make these, these blocks week after week where he's, he's making these lanes for the running back, uh, David Montgomery, to score these touchdowns that are setting that team up for success. Scoring in the red zone, super important. Laporte is a guy that's helping them do that. I've been excited about Luke, Luke Musgrave too, though. Uh, Packers took him in the second round. He has a 61.2 grade, 125 receiving yards. I think I think uh, LaFleur is doing a great job getting him open and getting the ball to him, even though it's not necessarily at the, the high level that you want to see for uh, you know a tight end like a Travis Kelsey, but I think it's a way for him to get there, and, I, and he's proving he can do it, right? He's proving he can run the routes. He's fast enough. He gets open. So I really like Musgrave. Michael Mayer, my number one guy, really struggling with a 47 grade, but everything in Las Vegas is 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 bad right now, right? Uh, Ray and I talked about so much how we wouldn't make investments in this Raiders offense, and uh, I, I stand by that. I think it's showing, right? So, uh, you know, Will there be a coaching change? Maybe if that happens, do I like Mayor more? Probably depends on the hire, uh, but definitely going to take some time before we start to see positive returns from him. Tackle position, interior offensive line, 
all were really weak, right? We talked about how tackle was a very weak class. We had Paris Johnson as our number one guy, but it was, he's the number one guy of a weak group. So I don't think he's a top talent in other drafts. I think he's a first round talent, but maybe not a top 15 pick in other drafts. Peter Skaronsky, I had as a tackle prospect because that's what he was coming out, but he's been playing guard. He's actually doing very, very well at guard, something we thought would happen, right? We saw things that w- would help him on the interior with his run blocking. Uh, he uses his hands very well. He's proven that. 81.3 grade on 63 snaps. He's dealt with injuries early on, which is a problem, but an 80.1 run blocking grade is something that uh, stands out to me. Again, that's what he's made for. That's what his body type's for, so really like to see that. Then going back to tackle, Paris Johnson was my number one guy. He has a 54.8 grade for Arizona. He's being asked to do a lot, right? At right tackle, yes. He's not playing left. He's playing right. Doesn't matter. It's still very difficult. And uh, again, it's 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 not that easy for a guy to step into a very rough offense with not a great offensive line around him and be successful. I think it's going to take time. The Cardinals have a bunch of draft picks. I expect them to make more investments in that offensive line and for Paris Johnson to be better in years to come. A couple other guys just to mention, Cody Mock was my number two. He's also playing inside at right guard. So a position switch for him has proven to be a struggle. 47.1 PFF grade on 257 snaps. He has played the uh, second most snaps out of most of the rookie offensive linemen. And another guy, right? Darnell Wright, who was not on my top list. I did not love his film, but he went to the perfect situation in Chicago, right? We saw what they did last year, getting a lot of uh, talent out of uh, a later round pick at left tackle, right goes to right tackle, 65.9 grade, 73 point run, run blocking grade, which is what he's good at, right? He's a big bodied guy um, and he's playing a lot, right? He's on, he's on the field. He's playing a lot. Uh, so like to see that from right. Going back to the interior of the offensive line, a couple other guys to mention, Joe Tittman on the Jets, uh, starting at right guard instead of center, 76.6 grade on 122 snaps and an 80.1 pass blocking grade. That is exactly what the doctor ordered for uh, for Zach Wilson this year. They He needed a guy to step in and prove that he can um, kind of hold his own on that offensive line. They need a lot of help on that offensive line. So i like to see Tittman come in there, be flexible, not playing center, coming in at right guard and doing really well. And then Jared Patterson for Houston was a sixth round pick. And they have to actually drafted a uh, center earlier on from him. But the sixth round pick, Jared Patterson, steps in as the starter. 62.5 grade, starting every game, 288 snaps. So that's really exciting as well. So the rookies in Houston just really stepping up and doing a great job. Um, going to the defensive side of the ball now. Defensive interior, we knew Jalen Carter was going to be great, right? We were saying he's the best prospect at defensive interior we've seen since an Dominican Sioux. He's proven every bit of that, if not more. 93.2 uh, PFF grade is actually first in the NFL. All players, not just rookies. He has 12 QB hurries. He's looked phenomenal. Him and Jalen Carter, uh, sorry, Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis on that defensive interior are looking exceptional. So everybody in the NFL messed up letting the Eagles get those two guys. But Jalen Carter in partic- particular is doing a great job. Kalaja Kansi, haven't seen anything from him yet. Brian Brisset, 62 grade. Mozzie Sith, Smith, 62.5. So this defensive interior class we knew was going to be deep, but I think it's deeper than we expected because Brisset, Mozzie Smith, both doing well. Then you go and you see a guy like Kobe Turner for the, for the Rams. Third round pick, 76.9 grade, two sacks, four hurries, and five stops. He is doing exceptional. And it's exactly what the Rams needed, right? The Rams are one of the teams that are depleted of talent. They traded away all of their stars besides Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, and Matthew Stafford. They needed guys to step up, and they're seeing that in a big way on defense, especially with Kobe Turner, uh, again, doing doing a great job. And that's going to lead me to the edge group where Brian Young for the Rams, another third-round pick, 74.7 grade, three sacks, five hurries, doing exceptional. Um, one other guy, defensive interior, I want to talk about Keanu Benton, 73.7 grade for Pittsburgh. He was a second round pick. So again, this deep group of defensive interior stepping up, showing promise early. That's super exciting. And at edge now, right, Will Anderson was the number one guy, I think pretty unanimously. I had him there as well. Miles Murphy was my number two. Um, I had Nolan Smith at three, Tyree Wilson at four, Van Ness at five, Foskey at six, and Will McDonald at seven. Um, 
it's been good, right? There's a lot of good edges. We talked about how talented this group was. I think the only guy that's kind of struggled so far of that group is Tyree Wilson, which was expected, right? Again, Oakland, or sorry, Vegas, not really, uh, doesn't have the coaching right now, doesn't have the talent right now. He's struggling 36.2 grade, but everybody else doing really well. Um, and Will Anderson being one of those guys, 75 grade, one sack, seven hurries. Again, Houston doing a great job with their young rookies. Miles Murphy's been great, 65.6 grade. Um, but one other guy I wanted to talk about is Keon White, second round pick for the Patriots, 77.6 PFF grade, 60 snaps. He has six hurries. Um, he's doing a lot with the snaps he's given. He was uh, projected to be a first round pick. He was invited to the to the draft and didn't get drafted in the first round. I remember the close ups of his face, and I was like, "That's a mean dude," and he's going to make teams pay for it. And I think he's doing that already in his young career. Uh, linebacker. Not much to say at the linebacker position. We talk about how it's the most difficult position to get right. Um, Jack Campbell's my guy. He's still my guy. 58.1 grade. Struggling, but getting playing time, getting on the field, getting experience. Linebacker takes time to get right. So give him a couple of years, and I, I do think we'll see the return from him. He has made a few plays already. A diving pass breakup in week one was got everybody excited. But guys, the other guys, Simpson, Overshawn, Henley, haven't played much, right? I haven't seen almost anything from them, if anything at all. Uh, but a guy that has stepped up is Ivan Pace Jr., who is an undrafted free agent for Minnesota. 84.9 grade, 91.1 pass rushing grade for a linebacker is incredible. And it's exactly what Minnesota needed. Again, they trade away a guy like uh, Zadarius Smith. A guy like Pace just steps in and is doing a really great job for them creating pass rush. And Henry Toa Toa for Houston, another Houston player, fifth round pick. No, he's not grading great, but he is on the field, 58.9 PFF grade, getting those snaps. Uh, he's He's been helpful for that for that team, right? And not another young player stepping up and doing well. Cornerback was another very deep group uh, this year. Christian Gonzalez was my number one uh, for my pre-draft rankings, but I liked Emmanuel Forbes a lot too. I talked a lot about him. I'll continue to talk a lot about him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand with my takes. Yes, it's been uh, kind of ugly early on, but uh, we'll talk about him. Devin Witherspoon was my number two. Joey Porter Jr., my three. Deontay Banks, my five. Um, so let's let's start there. So Christian Gonzalez has been incredible. 84.4 PFF grade on 191 snaps. That's a lot of snaps, right? He's also played the Dolphins. And in, in his game against the Dolphins, he had one of his best uh, graded games of the season. He had one interception that game. Two pass breakups on the season. He's been incredible. He's proven he's a first-round talent. Obviously, the Patriots know what to do with their cornerbacks. He's an example of that, stepping in from the beginning of the season and doing just a, a tremendous job for that Patriots defense. Devin Witherspoon was injured early on, stepped up. He currently has a 65.7 grade, doing well, not exceptional, um, but I want to see more of him before I start to kind of make determinations. Again, we're, we're doing four weeks for a lot of these guys. He's only got two. Uh, Joey Porter Jr., though, doing great as well, 71.5 grade on 48 snaps. Just needs to see the field more, right? I think they're trying to bring him on slowly. Uh, but a sleeper, Juju Brents, Indy second round pick, 87.6 grade on 53 snaps. He's only given up three receptions for 18 yards. So Indy has to be really excited about that. Indy, another team that kind of traded away some of their talent, let guys go. Gilmore's out of the building now, right? A guy like Juju Brents steps in and is doing a great job. Um, my number one safety was Brian Branch. He's playing corner now uh, in the NFL. Uh, 74.2 grade on 160 snaps, one interception, two pass, pass breaks up for the Lions. Uh, he's been everything he's been, uh, you know, talked about in the offseason. He, he looks incredible, uh, quick, good enough to uh, break up passes. Um, I, I kind of had concerns about his size and his speed, right? He's not a big dude, and he's also not the fastest dude, but he's showing speed. He's showing quickness, and he's showing he can cover. I, you know, I just had to watch him kind of, beat up my Packers. Yes, he got injured during that game, but he did a lot to help them win that game as well. The only other safety I had on my list was Antonio Johnson Jr., who has not recorded any snaps. And then one sleeper, Jordan Howden for New Orleans, fifth round picks, currently has a 60.8 grade on a legitimate amount of snaps. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. So who are the early winners, right, of the NFL draft? I think Houston, right? I, how many times did you hear me talk about Houston? Uh, they have the top performing quarterback. They have the second highest graded rookie edge. Tank Dell looks incredible. 
Second round pick, uh, Scruggs at center hasn't played, but they got that sixth round pick, Patterson, stepping in there and doing really well, 62.2 grade, and then Henry Tuatua. So they have about five guys that are starting at rookie as rookies right now. That's exactly what you want to see. And those guys are performing well, right? They're not just performing, they're performing well. But the sleeper team that did not have the draft picks that Houston did, the LA Rams with a second round pick, Steve Avila, starting at guard, Steve Avila with a 60.6 grade. And then Byron Young and Kobe Turner, the two third round picks, doing incredible for that defense, right? Really bringing the pressure with Aaron Donald, helping out, uh, you know, Sean McVay, just create defense and staying in games. They needed that and they got that from those two guys. And then obviously Puka Nakua, right? The fifth round pick, doing exceptionally well on that offense. So a lot to be excited about there. So I know that was a lot. We got it done in 25 minutes. Um, but yeah, I probably don't ever want to do one of these solo again. So Ray, you got to hurry back. Uh, everyone, thank you for tuning in though. I hope you have a great week. If you haven't yet, please give us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at all 22 underscore PFF. And then leave us a review wherever you watch or listen to your podcast. And thanks for tuning in.